Welcome from 3D Render and Beyond to our fifth tutorial of Back to Basics Cinema 4D. This tutorial will cover mesh menu with its create tools like knife, edge cut, bevel and more. The mesh menu has various tools that allow you to adjust the structure of polygon objects and spline objects. Most of these tools are available in the point, edge and polygon modes. Any object that you want to use with these tools must be editable meaning you need to convert parametric objects. You can make objects editable by selecting them and choosing Mesh, Conversion, Make Editable. Cinema 4D's primitive objects and spline primitives are parametric. This means they have no points or polygons and are instead created using math formulae and parameters. Since these objects have no points or polygons, they can't be edited in the same way as normal polygon objects and splines. For example, you can't select and move points, nor can you apply commands like extrude and create outline. However, you can edit these objects if you first convert them to points and polygons. To do this, select the desired primitives and choose Mesh, Conversion, Make, Editable, or just press the letter C. Let's see now the Optimize command. If you were to build an object from many individual triangles and quadrangles, by using the connect objects function, for example, very often some of the points and surfaces would be duplicated. For example, the parametric primitives can contain duplicate points after being converted to polygon objects. You can eliminate these double elements with the optimize function. The appearance of the object will not change or will change only slightly when using this function. So every time you use the command make editable, also use right after the command optimize. This way you know you don't have duplicates. Several commands, mostly in the mesh menu, have multiple options. It can be irritating if these are displayed every time a given command is called up. This is why the icon as highlighted in the image above is available. When clicked upon, the command options will be displayed and can be defined. These settings will then apply every time the command is called up. The current state to object creates a polygon copy of the selected object. For example, if you're using several deformers on an object, you can copy the resulting shape into a normal polygon object. Right click on the cube and choose current state to object. As you see, you have a copy of the resulting shape. Let's draw a cube, make it editable, and let's make a copy by clicking CTRL and dragging. Let's move one of the cubes. At this point, we decide that we want to have these two cubes as one object in the object manager. So select both, right click, and select connect objects. Using this command, you can create a single object from multiple objects. The disconnect command enables you to disconnect polygons or points from the selected objects. Select some polygons and choose disconnect to see the result. Right click in the viewport and select disconnect or you can find it under mesh. Commands disconnect. The separated surfaces will still be at the same position, but physically they are no longer connected to the object. The original object still contains the points of these separated surfaces, so the geometry is not destroyed. This tool normally needs a selection of polygons and polygon mode enabled. At the end, you still have one object in the Objects Manager. The split function differs very slightly from the disconnect function. The difference is that when using split, the disconnected surfaces leave a separate object behind. The original object is not changed. So let's select the polygons, right click, choose split. Choose the separated polygons and you can move them. If you want to delete the separated part from the original object, you can choose the original object and delete directly after splitting since the selection is still active. This works only if you are in polygon mode. Let's draw a new cube, make it editable and optimize it. Choose the edge mode, then press the letter V and you will see some shortcuts. Click on select and choose loop selection. Same thing can be found under select, loop selection. 
Go over the cube and select this loop. Now click on Mesh, Commands, Edge to Spline, or you can right click in the viewport and choose Edge to Spline. This command creates a spline from an edge selection. You can find it as a child of the cube. If you move it above and turn the cube off, as you can see, you have your spline right here. Under Mesh, Create Tools, you have Create Polygon. This tool allows you to create new polygon surfaces. Let's go on the top view and draw a polygon. Let's draw a cube, make it editable, and optimize it. Choose the edge mode. Make sure to deselect, only select visible elements. On the top view, let's select these segments. Mesh, create tools and edge cut. Or you can find the edge cut command here with the, if you right click in the viewport. The edge cut tool allows you to interactively subdivide the selected edges. You can adjust the parameters in the Attribute Manager or in the Viewport. Make sure you deselect Create and Gons. Change the subdivision to 3 and click Apply. As you can see, we have subdivided the edges. Let's undo the command. And in the Viewport, if we shift and drag, we can adjust the scale value. Instead, if we press CTRL on a PC or Command on a Mac and drag, we can adjust the offset. Pressing CTRL plus Shift and dragging, you can adjust instead the subdivision number. Edge Cut works in Edge Mode only. The Knife tool allows you to cut polygon objects and spline objects. The tool works in all three modes, Point, Edge and Polygon. Right click in the viewport and choose the Knife tool. You can also go on Mesh, Create Tools, Knife. Deselect Create Angons visible only and restrict to selection. Let's go on the top view, click outside of the left edge, press the Shift key so that you will have a horizontal line and click again outside of the right edge. The knife cuts the polygons by creating new points and edges along the cutting line. If you have made a selection, the cut will be restricted to the selection. Let's undo the command and choose the loop mode. With the loop mode, you can just go over the cube and see where you want a loop to cut through. Let's select again the edges, right click and choose the bevel command or mesh, create tools, bevel. The bevel turns harsh edges and corners into flattened, rounded, soft elements. Let's change the subdivision to two, modify the offset, and then you can increase the number of subdivisions. You will see you will see everything immediately in the viewport. You can click and drag on the corresponding colored handles. This way you will change the offset dimension and if you click here you will change the depth. It is totally interactive and extremely useful. Let's change to polygon mode. Select this polygon, right click in the viewport and choose the extrude command or click on Mesh, Create Tools, Extrude. This tool extrudes selected points, edges, or polygons, in our case, a polygon. If no elements are selected, all of the object's elements will be extruded. To extrude interactively in the viewport, drag left or right within the viewport. The extrusion takes place along the normals of the selected surfaces. You can also insert the offset right here in the Attributes Manager. Let's select the polygon again. Right click and choose the extrude inner. This tool operates in a similar way to extrude. However, in contrast to extrude, the selected polygons are extruded inwards or optionally outwards. To inner extrude interactively, drag left or right within the viewport. In the Attributes Manager, you can also change the number of subdivisions. 
and you can see here in the perspective viewport how it changes. Let's go in the top view and draw a spline. Choose the linear command and as you can see where you start drawing the spline it is white and towards the end the color of the spline is blue. This is the direction of the spline. If you want to reverse the sequence just select a point. You obviously have to be in the point mode. Select a point, right click and reverse sequence. As you can see here you have the white side and on the right hand side you have the blue. Now let's right click and use create outline. You can also go under mesh, spline, create outline. This tool also works interactively. Select the tool and drag left or right within the viewport to create an outline around the original spline. The entire spline is outlined. If the original spline is closed, then the outline is created as a new segment with a reversed point order compared to the original. If the spline is open, as in this case, by default, the new spline will be connected to it, thus creating a closed spline. In the options, you can select Create New Object. If this option is enabled, the original spline is not changed. The outline is created as a new spline object. The original spline remains selected. Now select a point. Right click and choose Soft Interpolation. This command switches all selected points to Soft Interpolation. If no points are selected, all points of the splines are changed automatically. Soft interpolation means that the tangents of the appropriate points are set to a standard length and direction. If you have the Move tool selected and you click on these points here, you can modify the curve. Sometimes it happens that some surfaces are reversed. As you can see here, the reverse surface is blue and the surfaces that are aligned correctly are yellow. You can select all the surfaces by deselecting here, only select visible elements, right clicking and selecting align normals. This way all the surfaces are pointing in the right direction. Another extremely useful command is set selection. Set selection can be used for point selection tag, edge selection tag and polygon selection tag. Here you can set or freeze selections for the long term and store them in one of the three tags. You can set either point edge or polygon selection. You can then manipulate frozen selections at any time using these tags in the object manager. So we have a cube, we have, we have made it editable, and now we are selecting some polygons. Then go to select, set selection. And as you can see, you have a set selection tag for polygons. Thank you for following this tutorial. If you enjoyed, do check out tutorial number 6, which is a special tutorial where we will share how we personally customize our layout and how we set our preferences. Follow our Facebook page for news and updates.